So you got yourself a plan nine or nine front grid and you've had some fun configuring things with the default software, but like everyone, you'll soon feel that there is a lack of software. Coming to plan nine is like coming to Unix and BSD or Linux in the early days. You know, you have this interesting open and flexible system with a bunch of tools to make software. It's a computing playground. The original Unix was a project for engineers at Bell Labs to test out ideas. When Unix escaped into the universities and was split off into BSD, it was a place for students to test out ideas. And when Unix went corporate and uh, licenses got expensive, a student in Finland wanted a free Unix clone to play around with, and that's how we got Linux. The easiest way to, you know, get into programming for Plan 9 or 9Front is to just go through Introduction to Operating System Abstractions using Plan 9 from Bell Labs by Francisco Ballesteros. Uh, like so many others before, he used a novel and free operating system for students to learn on. Uh, I'll have a link to this uh, paper along with some other Bell Labs papers in the video description. First off, Plan 9 is very much about the C programming language. After all, C was created at Bell Labs. And the first thing to take note of, just to do a basic hello world, is the way compilers are set up. So each CPU architecture has its own compiler and linker. And basically they are just sort of, you know, defined by some letter or number in front of C or L. And that's for the you know, various, oops, various systems that are available here. So compiling and linking are always going to be um, separate actions. So section two of the manual pages covers the programming stuff. You can see it here in section two intro. Um, and the introduction here will list sort of the, uh, you know, the commonly used libraries. Uh, the minimum libraries you're going to need for doing pretty much anything are going to be um, U and um, libc. I mean, U isn't really like a, uh, a library per se. Every architecture will get its own um, sort of architecture specific thing here. So uh, let's see, a good example would be, let's do that and um, uh, MIPS. So U.H will just sort of have the kind of architecture specific things. You'll see stuff like, you know, on the uh, AMD 64, which is a 64-bit system, a unsigned pointer is going to be a long, long for that 64 bits. Whereas on the MIPS 32, it's just going to be a long. Um, it'll have things like, you know, a double uh, float. You know, is Little Indian on the uh, AMD 64, where it's big ND on here. So yeah, the U.H just sort of covers the, um, the architecture specific stuff. I should bring that back. Um, the next one is um, uh, libc. So that'd be, uh, let's check out here. Um, so actually, if I go up one here, if I bring up just the, you know, the header file for um, libc, now here's all the stuff it does. Uh, the code for it would actually be over here under libc. So here's where all the actual code for that library is. So libc contains much of the other stuff you'd expect in the libc and then some. It has a lot of very specific um, sort of Plan 9 stuff. So I'll actually bring that back up here. Uh, where's that libc? So, you know, it has things like, uh, like dial is in there. Um, various other things. Uh, there's also, um, uh, you know, the standard IO, SDIO is available if you want that. Um, but a lot of that stuff is also, there's nine, plan nine versions you can use too. So let's actually just start from uh, scratch here. Let's cover um, finding man pages. So 
Um, you know, Plan 9 has the man command, just like Unix systems. Uh, you can preface the thing with a number for whatever section. Um, and so, yeah, man just sort of basically works the same. A um, couple things here is that uh, instead of a propos that you'd find on Unix systems in here to search through the manual pages, you use look man. Um, another sort of interesting one that's co covered under the man, you know, the man page manual is this uh, command called sig. And sig is useful for finding um, various functions. So like I could do sig for dial and it will just sort of return back, you know, the information on that particular function. Um, you can use it for all sorts of just the standard stuff. So that comes in handy for doing that. Um, you know, look man. Oops, we'll do this sort of thing. So it'll find anything, you know, with 9p in it. And as you can see, you know, anything with a 2, um, that is the, uh, the section that has, um, section 2 has all the programming stuff in it. So these would be, you know, man to 9p, I can do that, send it, and then I get the manual page for the, uh, the 9p library. Okay, so now you know where to read about how to write programs. Now it's time to actually write them. Um, there are two big text editors for Plan 9 and 9Front. There's Sam and there's Acme. Uh, this is the Vi and Emacs of the Plan 9 world. Uh, they both have their pros and cons. People have strong opinions on them. Um, Sam is really focused around text editing and it easily takes regular expressions. So if you know, regular expressions are your thing, you'll probably like Sam. Um, this is what it looks like here. Oops. So, you can have different files and stuff in it. Um, its quirks are that it was designed back in the days of, uh, like, internet dial-up. or um, So it had, does things like run a private snarf buffer. Um, you know, it, uh, snarf is the plan 9 term for copy, as in copy and paste. So... That's kind of its thing. It has a little command line up here, so if you want to quit, you can quit anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the way it works. Uh, and then there's Acme, and um, Acme was designed to be sort of a do-it-all program, and it kind of, uh, you know, it can kind of be used as its like own tiling window manager. So you can browse directories, run programs in it, modify menu bar entries. Um, the quirks of it are that it kind of suffers from the any sort of project that tries to be do everything. You know, it's a jack of all trades, a master of none. Um, it also has a uh, an interesting thing is that it does the very plain nine thing of uh, running itself as a file system. So you can check that out under. Oh, type that wrong. Uh, section four of the uh, manual pages to find out how the Acme file system works. So there's that. So I like using Acme, so I'll cover writing a program using it. Um, you can move the columns around with the left mouse button on the solid squares here. So you can change the size of those. You can move the windows to different columns by going to this little empty one. If you you know, change the stuff in a window. That little empty box will turn solid to let you know it's been changed. Um, so you can make, you know, new windows by middle clicking on new. That's sort of the middle button is sort of the command one. So if I want to get rid of it, I middle click on delete. If I want to save this file, I middle click on put, which is the save. Um, let's see. You can add stuff to the menu bars. So I like put a little win here. I type that in and I can middle click on it and that opens up a little RC window. Um, you can put other commands in there but it has to be sort of stuff it knows. So I can do like edit equals <clears throat> and uh, that will find things like a particular, um, a uh, you know, a line inside of a file. So that's line number five right there. Um, 
Matter of fact, you can put stuff kind of anywhere. So, you know, I could run, uh, I could type sysinfo, which is a regular sort of, you know, shell script on the system. If I hold down the, um, you know, the middle button and highlight it, that runs it as a command. So this is just, you know, just output the, uh, the sysinfo. So that's not any different than running sysinfo in a window here. The scroll. There we go. Same thing. Um, the left click is like open. So if I do something like, oh, let's go uh, do the man page again. So if I highlight with the left button, it will bring up that file and open it. Or if I just sort of click it once, if it's a whole thing. So yeah, the middle button sort of runs commands, the left button sort of opens things, and then your just sort of move cursor around is your, or your, yeah, maybe got that backwards. Um, your left button sort of move things around, your middle one is sort of the command, and the uh, right button opens files up. So I can do things like just sort of highlight just my user's directory and open it. So it does quite a bit of stuff. You can, and you can script it to change what sort of stuff are in here, or you can just straight put commands in there. Like I could just put that sysinfo up here, middle click it, and it runs. So let's write and compile a program here. I got my little hello world. I do have a little mistake in it. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, run the compiler here. Go ahead and make a little window command and run it. Put that over here if I want. And so since I'm running for the AMD 64, I'm going to use 6C. Uh, my program's called hello.c. And I have a problem in it, so let's go ahead and see what the uh, compiler does when it fails. All right, you know, function not declared. There is no prunt function. So this little bit at the front here, this is really standard across all of you know plan nine. It's basically a file and then a line number. So if I click to open it, it'll actually take me um, to that bad line. I can fix it, save it. Now, unfortunately this one still has that in kind of the buffer there. I can either get rid of it or the other one you can do to sort of update is git. So if I middle click git, it now fetches a fresh one from the file server. It's now fixed. If I want to run this again, I can just middle click and hold, highlight it, and it runs. So no news is good news. Now that will produce a hello.6 object file. So again, that dot six lets me know that this is for AMD64. Now I need to run the linker on it. So that's going to be 6L on hello.6. That worked. And rather than A out, I get a six dot out. And again, I can just sort of run it from here. And there we go. I got my little output. I can cross compile this too if I want to. So 7C is for the 64 bit uh, ARM processors. So let's go ahead and do that there. That worked. I now get an object file for hello.7. I will do the seven linker on hello.7. Now this will just make a seven out and there it is. Now, if I run it here, yeah, it's gonna say exact header invalid because this is a binary compiled for an ARM64 and this window right now is running on a AMD64. But I can fix that because I have a Raspberry Pi on my grid. So let's set this window here to use the CPU on that Raspberry Pi. So it's connected there. If I, let's see, I'm in scratch is where I put it, scratch. So there we go. We got that seven dot out. I can go ahead and run it and it works over here. And the other way around, obviously the, um, the six dot out you know, the AMD 64 code won't run on the Pi.
Anyway, that's just sort of the, you know, the basics of writing a program. Uh, again, I'll have links below to various man pages and papers and stuff. I do recommend just going through that operating systems abstraction um, paper. It's basically, it's set up like a textbook. Um, other than that, um, system code can be found in uh, syssource. So, I can go syssource. I can right click on that. Here we go. So uh, your basic libs will be anything prefaced with lib. So like I showed before, you know, libc is there. If you wanted to go through the library code, you know, so this is for NDB. This is your network database library. Um, all the commands are under CMD here. So, you know, if you want to find out how echo works, you can go see how plan nine runs echo. All the codes there. Uh, everything in the slash nine up here is going to be the kernel code. So if you want to see the actual, you know, how the sausage is made, various kernels that are available for the system, all that's there. Um, and, you know, Plan 9 code has a very particular dialect and style, so I do recommend reading through some of it to get a handle on that. And, uh, and as always, have fun.